While we don't know the first person who dared look at an uncooked oyster and thought, lunch is served, we do know that coastal populations have subsisted on them for millennia. Just as importantly, oysters, mussels, clams, and other filter feeders were important cleansers for a healthy aquatic system. For much of human history, oysters provided lower classes a plentiful, inexpensive, and nutritious food source. But years of overharvesting and polluted water destroyed wild stocks. Oysters now are considered a delicacy, an indulgence for special occasions, or to be shared with people special to you. On this episode of The Green Scene, we are diving into the operations of the Carlsbad Aqua Farm to see what they are doing to reduce the pressure on wild stocks of oysters and other shellfish, yet still bring fresh, local food to our stores, restaurants, and farmer's markets in a sustainable way. Rebecca, thank you so much for having us to the Carlsbad Aqua Farm. And so we wanted to go through some of the things that you guys are doing in your project here. Uh, firstly, we can see some of the equipment out on the water here, and you're actually harvesting mussels at this time right now. Well, the buoys are actually holding up rafts that are holding up vertical lines that have either mussels and <coughs> trays of oyster in them. So there are a bunch of trays all stacked up with a rope running down the middle. And then the mussels and oysters are just down there eating right now as we right. speak and growing until we're ready to harvest them. So oysters, mussels, and clams, shellfish in general, used to be more than plentiful in the oceans and along the coastlines. But uh, this is a response to those depleting stocks that humans have had an impact on over the years. A response to that and also it's a response to less importing of shellfish or any kind of seafood mm -hmm. and more growing it and eating what we grow here in the U.S. There was a time when the coastlines were just filled with shellfish but there wasn't a good enough watch being kept in mm -hmm. before we knew it. We didn't have our native oyster anymore in oh. this area, a native green abalone. So aquaculture is a fantastic alternative to wild harvest or wild fishing uh, with shellfish, for example, you're not doing anything different than giving them a place to grow so you can harvest them in, right. but otherwise they're doing, the shellfish are doing exactly what they'd be doing in nature. We've just simply said, here mussels, why don't you grow on this rope right. instead of out there on that piling. You right. Know? So here at the Carlsbad Aqua Farm, we see that you're operating sustainably to take the pressure off the ocean but you also go farther and you actually recycle the, the shells themselves. Yes, we do. Whenever you're harvesting shellfish, you've certainly got plenty of them that don't make the grade. We decided to look into how we could recycle them and then sell them to different entities and use them to restore an mm. ocean environmental area. Because uh, birds will use them for birds nesting. Birds use them. There's actually yeah. a bird called the least tern, for example, that makes mm. their nests out of oyster shells. We also use them as and building material. Yes, we do too. Uh, we also have contractors, both landscape and building contractors, that will buy these mm. oyster shells from us, grind them up and use them in the landscape or as plaster in walls and buildings. So right. There's a lot of purposes for them. So Rebecca, are you telling me yeah. this is one of your silent partners over here? Yeah, that's one of our silent partners, exactly. The other thing that seems to be in a relatively embryonic state is the development of these standards and practices that uh, commercial enterprises like yours would subscribe to in order to achieve a certification for sustainability. We're regulated from the federal agencies, you know, the FDA and the USDA and everything, all the way down to your most local level, which is mm. fantastic for us as a commercial farm so that the consumer can look in a store, see that certification right. stamp and feel like, okay, that's all I want to get are sustainable seafoods. And it's wonderful because as an aqua farmer, we are also part of that voice. We're part of those right. decisions. They're asking our opinions and using those opinions uh, along with all these other entities in order mm -hmm. to set those standards. So on top of being sustainable, or at least as part of it, it seems that even the center itself was recycled. Yes, it was recycled. We started off as a research institute for San Diego State. And then from there, this farm grew. This is Dennis from the Carlsbad Aqua Farm. He is the marine biologist in residence. And what are we gonna do right now? We're just gonna take a little spin around the lagoon in the green boat, and we'll take a look at closely at some of the oyster and mussel that are suspended beneath there and talk a little bit about what we do. Great. So this first one here with the balls is I've got clams in trays. Same with the oysters. And under these barrel floats are mussels. So everything's suspended off the bottom. When we take it off of here, we're going to get somewhere between 25 and 50 pounds of mussel on each tube. <laughs> there goes the boat full of mussel. I guess they got all they need. With that line, 
they can, uh, that on the boom, yeah. it's got that catch on there so they can lift the whole line right over the deck and harvest it from there. Oh. The oyster are a little different in that, of course, they're being grown in trays, but these also have to be pulled out of the water every three weeks. I'm hosed off, run through the tumbler, that breaks off the leading edge where all the shell growth is happening. Oh, right. And then we'll put back in the water and they repair and grow oh, out that shell. Okay. That makes it grow a deeper cup shape. But in the wild, these would grow in big clumps. So you're not fertilizing anything, you're not... No fertilizers, no antibiotics, no chemicals that we're adding in any way to the water out here. It's just a natural phytoplankton that exists here yeah. without any influence on our part. I'm going to point out the drift kelp that's coming in. I got a lot of, that's the macroalgae. I collect those, and those we'll use for the abalone that are also, that we grow on land. Oh. Um, and you'll probably see those in the tanks. I was going to say, while we're here, I'm just going to open one of these lids. Oh, so this There's an in-between stage between the hatchery mm -hmm. and when they're ready to go out in the lagoon. Right. Oh, okay. Now, what's in there are juvenile oyster. And there's probably about 300,000 inside this one Flupsy. Jeez. As they get bigger and they get about half inch to three quarter inch, right. they'll, we'll, we'll put them in the trays and put them out in the lagoon. In nine months to a year, they're going to be big enough to eat. Wow. We're here now with Patrick, who is going to take us through some of the operations for the Carlsbad Aqua Farm. And we're in one of the preliminary units that they use, which is... This is our algae room here. Okay. Yeah. So these bags are baby food. Exactly. All right. Baby food for oysters and mussels. What we're growing in here are a couple different varieties of microalgae. Mm -hmm. um, these are the primary food source for the mussel and oyster that we're going to be growing while they're still in the larval stage. We're basically replicating what they would naturally be feeding on right. in the ocean, but we're growing it in a little bit more controlled, cleaner, purified setting. Okay. And it's, you know, it's a good mix of high-tech, low-tech. You know, you've mm -hmm. got our parent cultures here. This is basically what it's all started from. You know, you're going to use mm -hmm. You add a little tiny bit of algae, you add mm -hmm. the sunlight, which we were using um, these bulbs in here to, you know, to achieve, and then some oxygen, and boom, it goes up, you know, okay. probably from crystal clear water to, this is a nice dark bag right here. Yeah. And really okay. the darker the color, the better. These bags and all of our ISO in the corner, they're all, it all is all ready basically to be fed out. So okay. we're pretty much flush right now with, with, with microalgae. The quality control is essentially maintained within this, this unit. The pure water straight from the lagoon is gonna be pumped on shore and then fed into this room. Um, and the way the plumbing is set up in here, it's going to be sent through three uh, different types of filtration systems, each of which is going to achieve uh -huh. a different goal okay. and polish the water in a different way. That seems to replicate the natural process that water will go through, through yes. sediments, layer after layer. And this is pressurized, okay. essentially achieving the same goal. Got it. Okay, so we just saw how the water's filtered from the lagoon to the pipes, mm -hmm. and now you send that over here so that you can have the mussels, oysters, and clams settle into really pure water. That ultra-filtered, pure, clean water from that filtration room you just saw is pumped across the ceiling through the pipes here, and then down and into each and every one of these tanks through this uh, room. These spreader bars are going to spread this purified, clean, filter, filtered water, out, water mm -hmm. out and fill this tank until it's about full to here. Once uh, those drains are put back in at the end, it'll flow right back out into a drain back out to the ocean. Cleaner than cleaner, it Cleaner than it was when we pumped it in. And that, this is one of the things that sets us apart. Um, you know, doing this and maintaining this equipment takes a lot of time and effort, but it guarantees that when stuff leaves our farm, it's the freshest it can possibly be because they can stay in these tanks until the right. very moment they're packed and end up on a truck heading to their destination. We do tests from each individual tank, tissue and, and water samples to an independent lab who will then look at it and guarantee and say, yes, what you guys are doing is working. This stuff is perfectly clean and guaranteed safe for sale. And you can stamp it. And we stamp it, exactly. Right. Well, Patrick, this is something else that you guys are harvesting here that goes along with the mussels, oysters, and clams, but yep. still a little unique on its own. Yeah, this is our uh, red ogo, or Gracilaria Pacifica. It's a local seaweed that grows naturally. It's very popular in both the culinary trade and in the uh, marine wholesale aquarium trade as well. It's okay. popular, as popular for some of your more popular aquarium fish as it is for sushi chefs and uh, oh. you know people who enjoy right. eating raw foods and seaweeds and yeah. that sort of thing. Uh, it's a very healthy item as well. It's very high in iodine and it's found quite often in health food stores dehydrated. This stuff grows like weeds. <laughs> Once the sun hits it right and, yeah. the, and the water temperature's right, we, you can go from literally a couple handfuls to hundreds of pounds in a oh, matter wow. of months. And you can eat these? Absolutely. Okay. If you'd like to try a chunk, I'll try a chunk with you. Sounds good. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Breakfast of champions. Is this salty, crunchy? Tastes like the beach? Imagine on top of a Caesar salad with some creamy dressing mm -hmm. or something. Mix it up with some vinegar yeah. and shrimp as a garnish for grilled fish. That's actually really good. And so we're going to try... Yeah, I've got, got a couple oysters if you'd like to, like to try one on the half shell here. I'll you pop bet. one for you. 
All right, well, we just pulled these this morning. One of the nice things about our oyster, too, that I love to point out to people is they grow so quickly here in the lagoon, only about a year. So they put most of their effort into producing the meat. The Irish writer Jonathan Swift said that he was a bold man who first ate an oyster, but it's a good thing that he did because these things are packed with nutrients, pretty low carb, mm -hmm. high omegas. It's actually a very nutritious food. Well, Patrick, thanks so much for having us. Hey, we, my pleasure. We really appreciated it. Good deal. And we definitely appreciate everything that you guys are doing at the Carlsbad Aqua Farm to take the pressure off the ocean yep. and feed people like us as much as we can. Hey, well, that's what we do. And thank you for joining this episode of The Green Scene. We hope you continue to watch programs like ours and also support the Carlsbad Alka Farm. And just remember, if you want to be seen, be green.